right. So this next piece, yes, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. Words simply cannot express uh, what Tom has meant to so many of us. As a matter of fact, how about if all of the people that were influenced in one way or another by Mr. Anderson, would you please stand right now? So where words fail, art speaks. And so we thought with Tom as the inspiration, Mr. Anderson, I apologize, uh, we would have one of his former students write a piece for him. And I would like to uh, invite Dr. Daniel Ott to the stage to talk about the work a little bit. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and this has been actually quite uh, an emotional evening for me already, um, especially with the last piece we just heard, the Persichetti, uh, which has an incredibly special place in my memory. That was the piece that we did, Tom, when I was a seventh grader. That was our contest piece at Perucci. And uh, I had no idea that that piece was on the program until uh, just about a week or so ago, and Paul told me. And I said, well, how fitting. I, um, so let me start by saying the first rule for a composer talking about their music is to never talk longer than the piece is going to last. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, I've got seven minutes. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll, I'll just briefly, um, tell you about my background and, and uh, my uh, experience with uh, Mr. Anderson, which is that I started French horn in seventh grade at Ferrucci Junior High School, and this would have been about 1987 or so. And um, uh, I started that September with Ed Sway to Book One, beginning band. And by the end of that year, I got bumped up into concert band so that we could play that Persichetti piece. And um, I, uh, it, it's, it's an underestimate, uh, an understatement rather, to say that um, uh, Tom was an, an incredible musical mentor for me. You were the, the first person that I learned about musical excellence from. And, um, and the fact that to do something great in performance requires a, not just a dedication, but a sacrifice. And um, so I, I could go on and on about that, but I'll just say that I learned some other things too later on, especially when I well, think was in high school and I started playing a Federal Way Symphonic Band under you again. And uh, I learned that what happens after band rehearsals is more fun than what happens during band rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't go into that. Um, so uh, let me tell you just a little bit about this piece and, and what it means, because there's a little bit of a story here. Um, I just told Tom a few minutes ago, but I don't think he knew this, but I'm actually an Anderson too. I've got some Anderson blood in me, and uh, through my mom's family. And uh, what's the Anderson motto? Stand sure. Uh, and the symbol is oak tree. And I, in, when I was approached to write this piece, was sort of casting around for some way to honor that uh, Scottish heritage and the Anderson name. And I looked, really, really scoured Google for a while to find um, and some kind of Anderson-themed folk song. Um, because one of the things that's so wonderful about the concert band literature, and you've heard several examples tonight, is that there's a, a rich tradition of, 
of setting of folk songs, and we heard uh, probably the, the kind of the, the paramount example in the Granger uh, Irish tune from County Derry, uh, also known as Danny Boy, which is really the gold standard. Um, and the other thing that band composers have done over time is they've incorporated other kinds of melodies. Uh, you maybe uh, have heard that in the Psalm 46, there is a quotation. Did anybody pick up on that? I'll give you a hint. It's a Lutheran chorale. Ein Festivor, right? A, a mighty fortress is our God. That, and, and this is something that um, I like to do in my own, I lost my thing here, sorry. Um, <laughs> hold it. Something that I like to do in my own work. So I wanted to find some sort of theme, but I couldn't find one. The closest I could come up with was a melody that is near and dear to my heart and is Scottish in flavor, but not originally Scottish. It's actually by the German composer Johannes Brahms. And it's from a, a short piano piece of his, an intermezzo. And it's a very late work, and it's beautiful. It's a Scottish-themed melody. And he quotes a little bit of a poem at the beginning of that piece in German. And I looked up its translation in Scottish, and it turns out that it's from a poem called Lady Anne Bothwell's Lament. And in doing a little bit more research, I found out that, in fact, there is a folk song that is set to those words. It's called Baloo, My Boy. So the Brahms and the Scottish folk melody both wind their way into this piece. And um, uh, the, the only thing I'll say at the end is that uh, I can't take all the credit for the tune. It's a great tune. And so thank you, Johannes Brahms, wherever you are. Um, I do treat it in my own fashion, but at the end of the piece, it does emerge um, really in, in its kind of original form. Um, so this has been an incredibly special evening. Um, Tom, I, I thank you uh, for uh, being, uh, and, I, and I'm not saying this uh, lightly, I've worked and had the pleasure to work with some really, really great musicians over the years. You're one of the finest, so thank you, this is for you. Especially, thank you, Paul. Thank you, South Sound Symphonic uh, Band. I, I'm grateful for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure to hear you play, and I hope you enjoy the piece. <laughs>